Hey guys, welcome back to Showstoppers. In this episode, we dive deep with Kristen Bryant, the Director of Content Marketing at Help Scout, to learn about their latest series called Against the Grain. Everything from how they planned the show, produced it, and how they are letting everybody know about the show. Tons of examples uh, that you can walk away with, tons of practical examples. I can't wait for you to get stuck into this episode and let us know what you think. Coming up. Hey, Kristen, good to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So for people who may not know you from before, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, about yourself and your, your title? Yes. Yeah, so I am currently the director of content marketing at Help Scout. And Help Scout is a software company that really helps businesses better connect with their customers. So whether that's communicating with your customers or providing them with excellent customer support, we have software that helps you do that kind of completely. I love it. And in terms of the, um, you know, in, in terms of the the content that you guys are creating, um, that's definitely what I wanted to focus on today, just to know a bit more about your philosophy towards creating shows. I mean, uh, and of course, for, for those who, who have been following your career, uh, you've done a lot of incredible things, even at Wistia related to show production. Um, I've noticed that you've obviously taken a lot of these learnings over to help scout. Can you tell us a bit more about like, um, I suppose your introduction to to show to show business overall and and how that journey started. Absolutely. So I I recently joined the Help Scout team just this past summer, um, and prior to that, I was working at Wistia, and a lot of my role at Wistia um, was supporting the creation of longer form uh, video content. So you know, Wistia has really been known for a lot of do it yourself videos, um, helping people uh, who are marketers just think about ways they can really spread video around the entire business. Um, but one thing that we started investing in more at Wistia during my time there was this concept that as a business, you have the opportunity to really build connections with your audience through longer form video content. And Wistia wasn't alone in that in terms of being a business that wanted to invest in that way. Help Scout was actually doing it at the same time. Um, and that was part of the reason why I was excited to kind of come on the journey uh, with my current team is just, understanding how we can better connect with our audience. We had a show in production, um, which I know that we'll talk a lot about, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I think generally speaking, the trend is there. There are a lot of companies who are investing more in this show production. And for me, it was really about storytelling and how to um, find messages and things that you have permission to say as a company that you maybe are losing if you're just following that very traditional content marketing playbook. Um, so I think it has the opportunity to really open up the pathways of conversations with your audience. If you're mm -hmm. thinking about making something that's more like a show, a video series, a podcast, something that talks about a challenge or really something that's going on in the culture, in the world, rather than just stuff that's so focused on, is this going to indicate buyer intent or product interest with my company? A hundred percent. And just to, just like on the back of that as well, um, that is so true. Like sometimes uh, for companies like a video series would essentially just be an extension of, you know, for, for better or worse, what, what ends up being an infomercial. And I think one of, one of the, the things that, that we absolutely loved about um, Against the Grain, the, the show that you guys are doing as, um, as Help Scout, is this notion of, of creating something that's, that appeared so sophisticated and so... Um, so beyond, I suppose, like what people may necessarily like expect or to say that another way, you know, uh, many times, you know, uh, shows can sometimes be a bit too predictable. And I absolutely loved how um, you guys really expanded on that definition. So I love that you brought that point up. And I think that's the perfect place to start, which is with the show Against the Grain. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it and even how you guys even started to, to plan that show to begin with. Yeah, so I can definitely provide background, but you know, just as a disclaimer, I joined the team after it had already been kind of in production. And so I have that history, but it wasn't, I can't take full credit for this show by any means at all. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, Against the Grain is a series that explores the ways that businesses are growing differently. The businesses that are really investing in their customers and their community and in their craft to grow a business, which kind of flies in the face of a lot of the narratives out there around, you know, speedy and exorbitant growth um, really quickly. 
And so what kind of came about, and in the years of content marketing at Help Scout, there's a lot of focus on building connections with customers. Um, that's what our product enables. That's what our customers are really great at. Uh, we find that every time we talk to customers, there are people who really care about the customer experience that they're delivering as well. And the thread that kind of started coming up in those conversations was how there are companies that are really dedicated to their customers, dedicated to their community, and are really trying to grow differently, are really trying to think about, well, how do I actually accelerate my growth without mm -hmm. just this churn and burn approach where it's like, oh, just give me all the revenue. I don't care if they leave me tomorrow because I'm just on this path to just get as much revenue as possible. And that's that's a popular narrative, I think, when we talk about um, especially early stage companies, but it's not the only narrative. There are lots of companies, a lot of our customers who are growing in a way that's much different than that. And so that piqued the interest of our CEO, Nick Francis, and he was like, well, what would it look like for us to explore this more deeply? Um, and kind of out of that, out of those conversations came against the grain. And we partnered with Jay Akunzo, who is, mm -hmm. you know, he's all about long form content, all about podcasts and helping businesses create it. Um, and we partnered with him on this to really tell the stories of companies who we think are doing an excellent job going against the grain and growing their businesses by investing in the relationships that they have with their customers. Yeah, I love that. And I was watching uh, the, the debut episode, obviously, with uh, Death Wish Coffee, um, as Jay Gunzer was talking to uh, the people behind the brand. And one of the things I loved was just the way that it was even produced. Was this something that you guys had a concrete vision for from day one in terms of like the, the production value? Or is it something that kind of unfolded organically? Yeah, so Help Scout has been a company that cares a lot about its brand, cares a lot about design. Um, and cares a lot about, you know, quality production for a while. Um, and this was no different because when they started down the path of creating a series, one thing that was really important was that it had a brand that not only spoke to what we were trying to talk to um, in the narrative itself, but also that would resonate with an audience who um, was connected to that journey. So we wanted to make sure that we created a sub brand for the series that checked all of those boxes. In terms of the actual like cinematic quality and, and value of, of the series, what I would say is that it was a no brainer for us that we were going to make something that looked really good and kind of surprised people at how high quality it was. I think that that's a huge opportunity for businesses. Like you were saying, when you don't meet the expectations of what content is supposed to look like from a small B2B SaaS company, right? So investing in that higher production quality was something that we were really excited to do and something that Jay and also the team over at Video Pilgrim, who was really the production team who shot it, um, helped us do and helped us put together. So um, that was something that we valued a lot. And I would encourage many people to think about, you know, what is your brand? What does the quality of video production mean for your particular company? And for us as, as a company that's really invested in design and truly values our brand, um, it was a no brainer to invest in that production quality. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And uh, the results speak for themselves. I mean, um, it, it is literally something um, out of like a Netflix like documentary, like it, it's just super, super crisp and super enjoyable to watch. And obviously the diversity of all the different brands. And speaking of which, like, um, I love how you guys started obviously with the ethos of, um, you know, of, of, of this notion of brands that are willing to go the extra mile to build relationships and are not necessarily short term uh, focused there were probably a lot of brands that came to mind, but how did you guys actually come up with the, the final roster of, um, I understand the, um, the show is obviously still in production, but for the episodes that are currently available, um, the brands are very diverse. Like how, what was your process to kind of like find these brands to begin with? And yeah, how did you, how did you uh, reach out to them to start? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it came from, um, actually, people who were in our networks and people making suggestions. So these are brands that we had become aware of um, and people just did outreach and we were glad that people answered our calls. I mean, I think that that is a large part of doing shows that rely on guests. And obviously I was not a part of the guest recruitment for this show, but what I know is that, you know, you can reach out to hundreds of people to be on your show and 
10 might respond. You know, you might get a call with 20 of them, 10 might really be out there. And so as you build that list for a show, it's so important to like have people that you really want to go after, but also recognize that not everyone is going to say yes. And one challenge that kind of came with the production is that we hadn't done anything like this before at Health Scout. When I was at Wistia, um, I did guest recruitment for the show Brandwagon. And mm -hmm. one thing that was a huge tool to help get guests on that show was the existence of the show before that, 110-100. And we could show people the quality of production, how we were going to take care of their own brand, just because, like, just by nature of having that asset already in hand. With us and doing Against the Grain at Health Scout, we didn't have an equivalent. Like we can tell you, here's our brand, here's our company, here's a video or two that we've made before, but we just didn't have that, you know, portfolio to show people. And now we do, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to, you know, whatever comes next for us because we have this as an example of how we will take care of other people's brand who join us on shows. We have an example of the quality of production that we like to you know, put out there and a sense of like what our company is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that so much just because, um, uh, yeah, to your point, like sometimes it, it could just be like um, uh, a theoretical idea versus something where there's already track record, uh, where there's already a visual reference for um, how these brands will be taken care of, how these brands will be well represented um, on your platforms and and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that, that makes total sense. And it's definitely something that um, I think a lot of brands could uh, could benefit from to actually create to, to actually have something before actually reaching out to guests if they if they can if they have that option I mean one of the things that I absolutely love about 110 100 was um, you know obviously you guys did that in uh, in collaboration with uh, with the sandwich uh, video agency um, but I, I love how you guys um, you know created so much uh, amazing content that was also reliant on like a lot of the members of uh, your team as well as uh, as well as sandwich radio it wasn't necessarily if i'm not mistaken it didn't necessarily lean on you know getting uh, too many uh, external guests and and so did you find that it was easier to put something like that together versus for example a show that requires guest recruitment i mean i think that it's Easier is a hard word to use when you're talking about production, in my opinion. Um, you know, I think that what it comes down to is a lot of times you underestimate the lift of a guest reliant show um, mm -hmm. because you're at the whim of not only people saying yes, but also people being like saying yes on your schedule. Right. Um, sure. And so when you have a tight production timeline uh, and you're really saying, OK, well, we're going to start recording the first videos. Um, the first episodes in May, and then we want the first episode to go live in August or whatever. You have like a summer time uh, production calendar. What you have to realize is that like it's summer for everyone, right? And mm -hmm. so then people are going to have vacations and all these kind of things come into affecting your calendar that you don't have control over, which is very different from if you're relying on internal resources um, to be, you know, to kind of carry your show, at which point in time you have full visibility and transparency over their workflow after uh, over how they prioritize getting these things done and whether or not they're going to be available for shooting um, just mm -hmm. because they're your colleagues and you can make requests of them that you just can't make of partners. Right. Um, sure. And so I, I would just encourage people to really think through, and this is true for podcasts as well, um, how if you want to have a guest reliant show, that timeline of production and the realities of scheduling have to vary. Um, and now, you know, this was a consideration when we were doing against the grain, but now, you know, with travel and things, it's different too. So you have to be willing to recognize, okay, what is realistic in terms of shooting something in my space or in a studio? Um, and how does that vary from you know, if I was doing a podcast or if I was just recording something or doing something like this, right, where it's all digital, is that what I want or how can I blend those things together? Um, mm -hmm. So I would just encourage people to think outside the box in that way. I think that the majority of podcasts and video series are interview based. And so people just slide into that because that's what's right. out there and what they see. Um, but, you know, for example, technically, 
I, I mean, against the grain is is a series of interviews, but it's really more of like a journalism style kind of like uh, parts unknown, if you will, where you're doing this deep dive and deep storytelling, which is much different than just asking people questions. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that there's a lot of show formats out there that people can explore. It just takes a little bit more effort to figure out how does this blend with my brand and how can I accomplish this? A hundred percent. And even like, and you're absolutely right. Like I think video podcasts and interview style shows um, are pretty much the bedrock, right? Like of a lot of different like show formats, um, <laughs> including this one. But but what I loved about Against the Grain, again, to your point, is that uh, the, the way that it was packaged, it, it definitely felt like for me as, as one of your viewers, it definitely felt like watching a documentary series, right? Or a docuseries as we're kind of going behind the scenes with different brands, Um which again is, is reminiscent of uh, some elements of, of 110 100 which which is another show that we absolutely love I wonder though that once you once people start thinking out of the box in terms of the episode uh, planning uh, the same way you guys have done with against the grain against the grain no, no pun intended how do you guys actually go about like script scripting or structuring every episode given sort of like the, the fluid nature of it um, or is it something to be discussed sort of like in in, in post so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think that storyboarding is a key part of production. Um, You know, again, I wasn't a part of the storyboarding process for Against the Grain, but what I know is that we relied heavily on our partners for this. So this is something that Jay Akunda was very hands-on with. This is something that the video production team was very hands-on with. And we knew that we were spending time with people, um, you know, a whole day we went and we spent with these companies. And so a lot of conversations happened. And then Mm -hmm. you have that story that you want to get out of it going into those conversations. And then you have the story that you can tell after you have those sound bites and the actual footage, right? Um, And Mm -hmm. so I think it's really important to kind of create an outline for the story that you want to tell, whether that's through interview questions or talking points that you know that you want your, not the guests, but your person to be your host, to be talking through with them, right? Um, Where you can get to those points of the conversation and have a sense of the direction you want the conversation to go before you actually hit record. You record it, and then you're able to listen to all of that footage and see it, and then put together the story along that original outline. But you may be able to like flesh different parts out uh, to a different extent once you have the footage, which is really exciting. So it's, it has mm-hmm. to be loose. You can't, it's not like an interview where you're going to just have step by step, question by question. Okay. I got through all the questions. I'm done. You mm-hmm. have to have a sense of more of like, what is the story that I want to tell? What would I hate if I didn't get to this, if I didn't get to mm-hmm. the story or if I didn't hear um, something and then you let, you let it go organically. Right. Especially if I think about, the episode of Against the Grain with Naturalicious, where they have uh, customers and people from the company at the table talking to each other. We didn't script that. We just mm-hmm. created the space for them to have an interaction and we recorded it, right? So having that kind of scene by scene, okay, this is what I want to accomplish. This is a story that I want to see, or this is a moment that I want to have. And then creating the space for that uh, to happen organically, I think is really what's important. Yeah, I I think that that makes so much sense from the perspective of going in with a plan, but also being flexible and and creating enough space to to your point to to let things unfold organically as well. And you know, I I'm almost willing to take a bet and say that probably some of the best moments came organically and they weren't necessarily like planned for um, previously, which is which is the magic, as you said, a very exciting um, one of the very exciting parts of actually creating and and uh, storyboarding these um, these episodes um, out of curiosity were you guys ever were were any episodes um, surprising for you in terms of like you thought it was gonna go a certain way but it actually took like a totally different turn um I don't think that the episodes in a, as a whole were but I I mean you could definitely talk to Jay Akunzo about moments where he just ended up going with the flow and talking to someone else. So I think that uh, in the first episode in Death Wish Coffee, um, and Jay, if you're watching this, keep me honest. Um, Basically (laughs) what happened is they were talking to people in the coffee shop about Death Wish Coffee. They had no plans at all to go to the 
to the whiskey distillery um, where there was a, a collab with Deathwish and this local um, distillery to make you know this alcohol. They had no plans on doing that, but it came up in conversation and then someone just called someone else and then all of a sudden they're recording this um, <laughs> scene in the distillery, which made it into the episode. Um, and you know, Jay's like tasting vodka, right? Like this is just happening. Um, and I think that that was really beautiful because it just, it wasn't something that a producer from the outside is necessarily going to know about before you get there. But then when you start having open and organic conversations with people, they start mm -hmm. making suggestions. Um, another example of this is not my story, but, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the episode of the show, uh, MailChimp has a show called Why Finders. I love that show. Yeah. And um, I was talking to one of the creators of Y Finders, it, it, man, this was several months ago now, and he was talking about the episode that they shot in, I think it was Croatia, where they just kind of got there, they had reached out to people to be, um, to be kind of, uh, to appear on the show based on whether they were working or places they had tagged on Instagram and they DM'd people who worked in these workspaces and all this kind of stuff. And so they went with maybe two or three people lined up to talk to. And inevitably, mm -hmm. in like every city that they went to, um, they just got suggestions for other people to talk to. And then those other people ended up in the show as well. So I think that it's like, if you're wow. really having powerful conversations and making connections with the people that you're featuring on your show, they will open up and make suggestions that will be a part of the show generally. Um, and I think that that is just kind of the beauty of creating and the beauty of production in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh my God, Kristen, you're dropping like golden nuggets right now. Um, that makes so much sense <laughs> to me. And, and by the way, speaking of Jay, um, uh, we're huge fans of his work. He's actually going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. So I'm sure we'll get an opportunity okay. to talk to him more about Against the Grain for sure. Um, Please but yeah, do. Like, he, he is going to tell you so many nuggets. Make him fact check me on the distillery story, <laughs> well, I made up, uh, you know, a uh, tall tale. I'm sorry, it sounds great, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure that happened. <laughs> and, and there's this other story that that someone that no I, I totally get you though and um and yeah just just going back to why finders like um uh, I, I love the the lesson that 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 you shared with us from from your conversation with the creators of that show uh just around yeah like keep, keeping things um open with even with the guests because you never know like if you make them part owners almost in the production sometimes they'll come up with ideas that you know that that may not have necessarily occurred at all uh, to uh, to the host or the producer of the show, so to speak, and it helps to make it a lot more authentic and a lot more exciting overall. So, Kristen, um, I'm conscious of our time, so I do want to cover a couple of things with you as well. And the time that we have remaining, talk to me about what you guys do after you actually uh, release the episodes, as far as like distribution, repurposing, other ways that you spread the word out uh, for these episodes. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is our biggest opportunity. Um, I think that for a lot of uh, small software companies like Help Scout, it's like a lot of things end up being very project based. And then you kind of look for that end date. Well, we delivered it, we shipped it, it's done. Um, mm -hmm. But with a show like Against the Grain, it, there's an opportunity for it to never really be done, right? Um, one thing that I learned from working at Wistia and particularly with 110-100, which has been out for two years now, is that there's always new people that are gonna watch a show um, that's timeless. And Against the Grain is timeless. It's not, um, it's not about any particular product feature. It's not about the year that mm -hmm. we're in. It's about the story of a way of uh, companies are being built, right? Um, right? And so there's an opportunity for new people to find and engage with the content kind of forever. Um, and so in that sense, we set up a time period where you assume that you're going to get the majority of your viewers right when you launch. You have the most momentum, you're building on it. Um, we were sending weekly emails out to folks, um, always asking for subscribers so that we know, you know, we're not just hitting our entire database of users with information that they might not want. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then we're kind of betraying that trust. I think it's important to build subscribers lists, uh, particularly for businesses. But then once you get going on that subscriber list, I think you have permission to uh, really 
just promote the content, make sure that they know the storylines they may have missed. Or, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people see the email but don't have time to watch the episode. And re-engaging folks with that content later is totally okay because they subscribed with it, uh, just subscribed for it, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that just continuing to keep the ball rolling and build momentum, whether it's on social or sending people emails or uh, we also have done a couple of events related to Against the Grain. Uh, we did a, a launch event with Jay and our CEO, Nick, who were in conversation about the series. Um, and then we also did kind of like a follow up talking about the themes where Nick and I talked about like what we were excited about mm -hmm. the themes of Against the Grain. And so that follow on content, I think, is a great way to continue engaging people with the themes of um, the show, even if it's not like episode specific content that you're creating in the long term yeah yeah uh that makes sense um especially the the notion of actually recording additional uh behind the scenes content or uh, exclusive content based on the show it actually reminds me of um i remember watching the uh, the irishman uh the movie with uh you know um yeah with all all, all these guys de niro and, and, and the rest yes. of the guys and they actually did the very long uh, movie by Scorsese, yeah. <laughs> the very long movie by Scorsese, exactly, yeah. Then again, I think all of his movies, well, I haven't seen all of them, but most of them are pretty um, are pretty long and epic. One of the things that I love that they did is they actually went back to, I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking about, but on Netflix, they released like um, like an additional thing where it's basically um, all, all the main actors around that same table, uh, that same like um, mafia table where they were ha where all the important decisions and scenes were happening. And they were just talking about uh, the characters that they were playing and just reflecting back on the movie, um, you know, like some of the the scenes that were particularly like interesting or challenging. And again, like people and that and that thing itself, if I'm not mistaken, I think is like 20, 30 minutes or something like that. And so people may watch that and be like, wait a minute, I need to go back and watch that full uh, that that full movie because it's funny we always talk about like repurposing and like extracting more value out of the ex out of the existing episodes but i love what you said because it adds to that and it says like hey like you can actually create additional brand new content assets that continue to to drive the cause uh for these evergreen uh series because to your point like people may come like next year and and, and the year for and the year following just like you know they're doing with a lot of uh wistia's amazing shows like you know, people are still experiencing these shows for the very first time. So it keeps everything evergreen in that regard. And what about, um, uh, sorry, were you going to say something? I was just, if I could, yeah, if I could just chime in yeah. there, the two things that I wanted to pull out from what you said, the first one is that it's totally exciting and, and smart to be taking, um, cues and inspiration from a company like Netflix in terms of how they're promoting their content, right? These media companies and these like networks and providers are just doubling down on the ways that they distribute and promote their shows because that is how they will make money. That is how they survive. So I know that we don't have a content wing arm production studio that is anywhere near Netflix, nor will we anytime soon, right? Um, but kind of taking those cues and saying, oh, they're making behind the scenes content. Oh, they're making, you know, dedicated channels on social to talk about, you know, the super fans of this show. You have the mm -hmm. opportunity to do that as a business if you're really investing in high quality content um, and, you know, giving people additional ways to interact with the content and the themes. Uh, so that I think is very important is to take those cues from places like Netflix as you think about your distribution strategy and how to scale mm -hmm. that to an appropriate level for your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I mean, one one thing that I was going to ask that's actually on the back of that is from a promotional perspective, like we keep talking about this notion of leaning more into the personal brands behind the company. Uh, and I'm, I'm preaching to the choir now, but basically, right, like a lot of companies um, naturally get into the habit of, okay, this is technically company content. So we're just going to put this in our company brand channels. When in fact, we are all seeing this time and time again, that personal brands, especially collectively, are having a lot more uh, reach and a lot more resonance with, with the end audience that they're trying to reach in general. The question that a lot of people sometimes have is like, okay, um, makes sense, you know, more people, more individuals promoting the episodes and the content around it, but how do we actually get people, how do I actually get my employees to be motivated to share that content on and to be part of that experience? Um, and I was wondering if you had any any thoughts on that specific specifically. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is that this shouldn't be thought of as a marketing project. Um, if you're a small company, like again, Health Scout is 100 people, about 100 people. Um, Wistia, when we did 110, 100 was about 100 people. Um, you know, that is a small company and small companies don't usually take big risk like against a grain, but we did, right? Help Scout did. Um, and I think that it's really important where you say, this is a company, this is a big moment for our company. And that requires buy-in from, yes, your VP of marketing and the directors of marketing and whoever's involved with the production. But it's also the CEO telling that story. It's also the whole company understanding that, like, we are doing something that's really exciting um, and that this, is, that this matters, that we are putting ourselves out there as kind of trailblazers at this point in time. There's not a lot of companies of our size that are doing content in this way. And I will tell every company that's thinking about it, that will be true for a while um, because it's just not something that's getting on people's radars yet. Um, and that's a huge differentiator and a huge opportunity to just spark some excitement around it. Um, you know, one thing that's really different in terms of this content at Help Scout versus this content at Wistia at Wistia, we were making software for marketers. And so our entire, you know, content marketing approach was how do we make content that marketers will find inspirational and interesting. And so behind the scenes about a show or just like talking to people about shows, it was like, of course, the whole company is behind it because it enables us to learn more about our own target audience. When you're working at a company like Help Scout or, you know, any other software company that's not selling to marketers, it's not the same story. So you have to be more intentional about, well, why does this matter to us as a company? Why does this matter to us as a brand that we differentiate in this way? And who is it that we're talking to? And why is that exciting? Um, why is it exciting to engage with a, a different audience with? Like for us at Help Scout, it was really like we have this really great fan base of folks who are customer service professionals. We have a lot of authority when it comes to talking about customer experience and, um, you know, just how to deliver excellent customer service. We've been doing that for a decade now. Um, but when it comes to talking to, you know, founders and people who are um, small business leaders, they're buying our product too. They're reading our blogs about customer success and customer engagement, customer loyalty, but we don't really have a space to engage with them. And this is what Against the Grain gave us an opportunity to really do. And we've been so pleased with how people have responded, the questions that people have asked about other businesses and all of that. And it's really about getting the whole company on board with that opportunity um, that I think that people really just need to invest in. Totally. And I mean, just just to add to that as well, like, um, you know, I suppose like from a, from, a, from a personal branding perspective, there's so many benefits to that as well. I think a lot of people are realizing the importance and almost the urgency of building their own personal brands, whether it's on LinkedIn or other platforms. But for folks working in B2B, uh, naturally it gravitates to, to LinkedIn primarily. And many times like the these content assets could actually be used as an opportunity for them to leave their own original uh like sort of like signature on it by the way they caption it by the way they use that content to start conversations with others in their network um so on and so forth and it definitely helps when uh as a company you are uh, you are internally perceived as a trailblazer in what you do just because uh, there's not many companies that are doing that same thing which i i, I get your point like this could be already be intrinsically motivating for a lot of folks to to jump on on that bandwagon, well, so to speak. Well, and I think the other part of it too is that you have to think about from a company perspective, if you're like listening to this as a marketing leader, a company leader, there are just storylines that should get your employees and your team excited. Whether that's because we are, you know, at Help Scout, we became a B Corp. That was something that like should have gotten the entire company excited. It absolutely did. It was energizing for the team. We became a B Corp. We published a new diversity dashboard online to hold ourselves accountable and tell the story of how we're making our company more diverse and more equitable and inclusive. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that's worth, you know, that's exciting to tell the story of. And something like this, when you're investing as much as you can um, in high quality production, 
in something that's really going to resonate with your audience should be up there with those company storylines that are going to get the entire team exciting, uh, excited. Um, other companies, you know, it, it's just, to me, that's just a part of what makes your team excited. Um, you know, this is like IPO mm -hmm. equivalent to me. You know, it should be yeah, yeah. it should be that exciting. It should be the equivalent of someone being like, "We're about to just go public" or something like that. You know, um, right, it right. should be that exciting to hear that you're investing in something that's creative and risky. For sure, and I mean, I, I love that. It you're, one of the first things you said was like, "Hey, like this transcends like marketing. This is not like departmental like marketing project. This is really." Because um, when you say team, you're referring to pretty much the, the the overall organization and getting something that they would all be intrinsically motivated in, and ideally to have that figured out on on a company level uh, prior to the show coming out, so that it's not like an afterthought, right? Where it's like, hey guys, um, <laughs> would really help, would would really appreciate if you can like help us share uh, like these videos on your on your uh, LinkedIn or whatever. Um, to actually make them part of that from the get go, I think makes. Um, yeah, a difference like from from night and day for sure. And Kristen, like I guess to, to wrap it up because I I am conscious of of your time. Otherwise, we'd be here for hours. What are some parting <laughs> thoughts, perhaps, that you have on um, just on show creation overall? Anything maybe that we didn't cover that you think would be important for folks to know um, if they have just started doing a show or maybe are still thinking about doing it? Um, any any parting thoughts for us? Yes, um, I would just say that. You can never invest too much time in pre-production. Um, I think that we all get very excited about, let's turn the camera on, let's get this guest in here, let's build the set, whatever it might be. But you can never spend too much time thinking about how, you know, what is the overall story here? Do I have the consensus? Do I have buy-in from everyone on the team? Do we have a plan for how we're gonna launch this? Do we have a plan for how we'll distribute it in the long term? Mm -hmm. Has everybody been involved in the conversation that's going to touch this project? Um, I think that really ensuring that your whole team is on the same page before you start uh, is really important. And it gives you the leeway to not have to worry about all that other stuff when you're mm -hmm. doing the creative work of just making the series. Um, and so I would just encourage people to think about the plan, get buy-in on the concept, don't be super precious with the ideas because, you know, that buy-in and those conversations are just going to make things better. If you welcome feedback earlier in the process, it's all just going to be better. And I think you can improve your process and the overall end product as well. I love it. And for folks who are uh, super excited to jump into Against the Grain at the moment, uh, where can they find your show? Yes, yeah, so if you go to healthscout.com slash ATG, you can find Against the Grain on our website. Um, so check it out. It's fantastic. Um, I am clearly biased, but I really do <laughs> hope that you enjoy the episodes and subscribe so you know when more content is coming your way. No, it definitely is fantastic. And I'm sure a lot of people will be checking it out after this. Kristen, thank you so much for your time today. And we'll catch you soon. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.